hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Am I Doing This Wrong? I'm your host, Morgan, here with my awesome friend, Ryan. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Super excited to be here. How are you doing, Morgan? Uh, I'm okay. You know what? We had um, an interesting customer, which, you know, it ended up not being a customer anymore at the end of the day. So that was kind of stressful, you know, that customer service side of life. Um, (laughs) Isn't that that the best ending, though, to not have them as a customer anymore? Like, they had a bad customer, and now they are no longer a customer. Right. Yes. Yes. They're just a bad person now. Yeah. (laughs) He has to live with that. He has to take that on, you know, through the rest of his life. So, yes. (laughs) But um, other than that, I've been good. How about you? How are things going? Yeah, it's been good. I'm back to school, back teaching, um, back in the classroom. Mm. A lot of backs. Mm. Just (laughs) backing that ass up. You know, all the things. Uh, (laughs) It's good, though. But it's good. It's good to be back. I will say I was definitely, like, interaction deprived, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Um, Being back just even around, like, my colleagues, you know, other teachers. It is nice. Um, Yeah, I miss that. Uh, Not everything is always going to be perfect, obviously, with teaching and everything. It is a lot. But I am genuinely glad to be back interacting, you know, leaving in the morning, having that kind of separation of work and home. Right. Um, So that's good. Yeah. So I will say mentally that is helping me kind of, you know, navigate this weird COVID or COVID space. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And it's a new school. So that's kind of a nice change of pace. You and I were kind of talking that about that offline. That's true. Off mic. (laughs) <laughs> and so it sounded good it sounded like a cool environment so yeah yay. okay definitely yeah awesome well speaking of work our topic mm. today is quitting your job <laughs> yes so <laughs> let's talk about it are we doing it right is there a right way are we doing it wrong Ooh. um I have a couple of stories where you might think that's the case so <laughs> let's get into it <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really, so I love this topic for many reasons because I take great pleasure in quitting a job. <laughs> it's like, it's like one of my favorite pastimes. Like I think everybody, if you have not been able to just like relieve yourself of a job that like, you know, maybe like, you know, this job, you needed it, right? It was your bread and butter. Like you definitely needed it to support yourself, but you were able to find something else that does that. And then some, and you were able to just like, really just give the finger to these people and be like, you know what? Fuck you. And I'm quitting. But I wanted to say fuck you before I quit. But now I quit. (laughs) No, you're gonna pay me to say fuck you. (laughs) And then I quit. And now I quit. Yeah. And goodbye. So that is not the main opinion or popular opinion or popular approach Mm. to the subject from doing some research, which, yes, and I think I'm just a guilt ridden person in general. So anything like quitting a job just feels like the end of the world to me. Mm. But I love your take. Uh, We have some... um, some similar and uh, similar topic to end with. So I think mm-hmm. that's a really good perspective, you know, from the jump. Um, yeah. And it's been interesting how many people, you know, career wise, what people have been doing, especially with the pandemic, you know, and so there's, there's this um, trend going on, I guess we can say mm-hmm. that they're literally calling the great resignation. And and it's been a really, you know, interesting topic to look into because of how those dynamics have shifted. And I know you and I have actually talked about this in, you know, recent months, just how many people, how the job market is changing, how people are viewing their career opportunities, what they're doing, um, how they want to approach their work. I mean, how many places, you know, prove that they don't need to go into an office, for example, Mm -hmm. you know, and also... Mm -hmm. You know, how many people were essential workers and the impact it had on them. And it's it's just a really interesting time. And so they're calling it the Great Resignation. And I found a lot of good information Mm -hmm. from this article from CNBC. 
And as always, our, uh, you know, our sources and links will be provided at the end of the show notes or, you know, yes. above the comments. Let me just, let me just yeah. give props to Morgan for always doing so well with the research. <laughs> I will say I had a research for these episodes and it's so tough for me to work it in like effortlessly. So <laughs> kudos to you. Very good job. Thank because you. Done very well. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I, I have. I'm good at transitions. <laughs> oh, take that That's as a skill. You. Put that <laughs> on your resume. <laughs> I will. Um, <laughs> so, like we said, the pandemic has really caused this trend, the Great Resignation. So, right. some interesting information I found that was quote: ninety five percent of workers are currently considering changing their jobs, and ninety two percent are willing to switch industries to land a new position. Um, And then a a recent, this was found from a recent survey from Mm monster.com. And um, one of the only caveats that they really pointed out was people's expectations of how quickly they can find another job. People are Mm. thinking weeks, but really it takes months. Even the interview process, if you know, I mean, I've, I left a job last year Right. In July, and then you know, I'm thinking, okay, it was a good job. I have these great skills, and you know, it took a, a few months. And just that interview process, even when you hear back from someone, that doesn't mean you know things are locked in. You still have to interview with the first person, the second person, then you know, a team, and and all this. And it it does depend on the industry and who you know, of course, and circumstances are different. But just as a general idea, um, that's usually the only caveat that they were really bringing up on that front. Hmm. So. Well, I will say, so that is really interesting because, oh, so basically over 90% of, you know, like, doesn't matter what profession you're in. Right. There's around, yeah, there's around 90% or over 90% of people that if presented with something better, would do just that. Leave, you know, take that better position. Whether or not that better job is everything that they dreamed of, if it puts them in a better situation, they're going to take it, which really just says also a lot about our economy and how much pressure there is to not just survive, right? Like you want to do things, right? And so these jobs, the fact that like, even though, yes, the interview process may take long, right, and it may be stressful, if there is even a chance that this is going to put you in a better position, maybe mentally and literal physically, right, like a better, you know, apartment or home, whatever it is, I just think that's really telling about, (laughs) like, the state of our society. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah, of course. And if you are looking to change it up, um, we do have some tips we'll just throw out real quick. So, you mm-hmm. know, if you're on the hunt for a new opportunity, um, some tips from this article, I thought were pretty good. So if you have a pen and paper, get ready, <laughs> um, <laughs> identify your wants, industry, company size, transferable skills. And these are really big ones and they are particular to, uh, the pandemic. It's really shifted the job market, how people are hiring, you know, thinking that you need certain experience for certain positions, that's mm-hmm. really shifted. And so, you know, so when, you the say, time. Yeah, go ahead. when you say transferable skills, like, so that I'm literally thinking of it like in a literal way, transferable skills it are skills that you can use like through multiple, um, like professions right. and like professional fields. Is that what right. that means? Okay, right. so like so computer if you were skills. Like, right, computer skills, okay. you know, let's say you were doing some kind of data entry, but now you want to do account management. What are mm. skills that are going to be applicable to both? And what's a good way to word that on your resume? Mm. Okay. Um, got it, got yeah, it, it. so tip number two, set job alerts, of course, you know, if you know what you're interested in, now you uh, have identified your wants. So take a look, look for alerts, you know, all the websites, all the big ones. I'm sure you've heard ads on other podcasts for all the different (laughs) um, hiring uh, platforms out there. So set those job alerts, update your resume is number three, which Mm. is a big undertaking and feels terrible, but do it uh, (laughs) because 
<laughs> updating your resume is going to be a huge one. Obviously, you know, that's their first impression, unfortunately. And it's right. You know, so this is, so this is something, okay. With resumes, this is always my thing because if you, you know, just type in, you know, good resume template, right. Or good resume example. Yeah. There are so many variations of what a good, a quote unquote, good resume is supposed to entail. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the things for me is always whether or not to put a picture on my resume. And, and I think like, this is just, you know, this is just me kind of from my experience, what I've noticed is that say for instance, it's like a data job or like, yeah, like an account management job. This is something that it's maybe not going to really matter as much what you look like, but something like maybe like in sales or something where, you know, a social media rep or something like that, they kind of want you to like look the part, right? And so I feel like a lot of times when I see like, um, because I have recruited before in past jobs, and when I see pictures on certain people's resume, I can tell who were like the communication majors in <laughs> college, like versus, you know, like the engineering majors in college, you know what I mean? Because it's just like, it's obvious that there's no exact way for your resume to look, right? It really is just depending, or like, say you're, you know, applying for like a diversity, equity, and inclusion job or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Like these DEI jobs you're going to probably want to put your picture on there, right? Because if you're just like run of the mill, like everyday white dude, sorry, you're not exactly going to be the face of a DI, (laughs) like a diversity hire, you know? But if I'm trying to get hired in, you know, like a district, like I'm working in now, I am going to put my picture because I'm like, this black woman, I need you to know who's behind this resume, okay? My name yes. sounds like Ryan. It sounds like a white dude. <laughs> so I'm like, I need <laughs> yeah. <to know." laughs> right. Yeah. But I'm not Ryan from California. I'm Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still from California. But yeah. Right. Right. So from Cal- yeah. <laughs> Just pronounce my name correctly. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's a good point. And I do think it really depends on what industry you're going into. You know, if you are going to be the face of something, A lot of companies will ask for a video resume sometimes, not a lot, sometimes, depending on what you're going to do. So Mm -hmm. that's something to look into, you know, and like you said, there are templates out there, which Mm -hmm. are a good foundation for, you know, updating your resume. But, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, YouTube resources. I definitely did that. I was all over YouTube when I had to update my resume and I want to give a shout out. Um, Her name is Self Made Millennial. She's got a great YouTube channel. She's on Instagram. I used her for so many resources. She has so many great videos out there for different industries. Um, She's been working in HR recruiting for a long time, and she just has a ton of great information that she can give you if you are looking to update your resume or trying to figure out how to change industries, you know, um, interview tips and all that good stuff. So check her out. Um, Mm -hmm. Number four would be network, you know. Mm. Figure out who's doing what you want to do. Check LinkedIn, of course. Social media is a great place. Um, Send that email, you know, self-made millennial, if you want a a cold email to send to someone who works (laughs) at a company you like or, you know, works in the industry that you're interested in. Um, And then find a mentor, (laughs) even. That's true. So before we get on something wholesome like mentors, <laughs> I, I want to talk about networking. Mm. So this is really interesting to me because also, again, right, it depends on what profession and what field you are going into. Right. Because networking can be anything from late night drinks after like the company conference, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, all the way to like, yeah, you set up like a conference call with the CEO of, you know, whatever company you want to work for, like Snapchat or something. I don't know. Yeah. Snapchat's still around. That's that's the thing, right? That's relevant. I Kids mean, talk about I think Snapchat. so. Okay. I think, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen it here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen the logo. Yeah. But <laughs> point being, I think it's always just really interesting. I think as like an undergrad when I was still, you know, yeah, taking my core classes, kind of figuring out what I wanted to do as far as like, you know, when I was within my major and stuff, I always thought about network networking as like this kind of 
really formal situation where like everyone had ties on, you know, and like even me, I don't know. I, I, I know. apparently I look like a butch lesbian in my networking events. <laughs> but <laughs> that's what I always thought of. I was just like, oh, these networking events, they have to be like fancy and, you know, people drink. It seems so, I don't know, whatever yeah, people it do. It seems really posh and, and like right. unattainable for like a, you yeah. know, regular Joe. Like networking is kind of a, really word for something mm-hmm. that shouldn't be so hard to do right yeah, which literally means just be able to but I will say because the word networking it, it like like we talked about it can be a spectrum right there's so many different ways yeah. to network uh but that's one thing like you don't need to be a communication major right in col- college to be able to communicate effectively right. but networking is really like the art of kind of figuring out when it's appropriate to like slide that business card, right? Or, you know, say, hey, you know, drop that, you know, company that you've been working for or something like that. I think networking in a more general sense is, or, you know, in the more like formal sense is more like, yeah, like that, like a conference call or something like that, right? Right. But networking on the day-to-day is really just like knowing that boundary between personal and business, right? And being like, hey, well, if you're available after, we were going to go get some food. Uh, I don't know if you're available, but, you know, we're interested in meeting after or something like that instead of it always having to be. So don't I would say my advice in that realm, because I have had a lot of different jobs in different professions, Mm -hmm. I would say, you know, take it upon yourself to kind of ride that line between. Yeah. Is it is a little little is it a little too forward or personal to ask this person out for dinner after or, you know, or for drinks or something like that? You obviously have to read the room uh, and that does take social skill, but. You, you do need to know that networking is going to happen. It, it could happen in any area of your life. You know what I mean? Right. You kind of have to be prepared for it. Right. And kind of bouncing off that, I think you should really try and maintain authenticity. And mm. don't always just go looking for people who can do something for you. Mm. You know, I think if you're going to network, see what other people are doing and just, you know, not everyone has to be a job opportunity. Maybe it's just someone you can learn something Mm. from, Mm -hmm. you know, just, hey, I saw you got started in this. I'm really interested in it. I mean, you know, my friend that I met on Instagram, who we actually talked about before we started the podcast. Mm-hmm. you know, and he was so like thoughtful and helpful and nice and supportive. But I was really just reaching out to say, I love what you're doing. You know, he does food photography and he has a podcast. And I was like, really cool stuff. I would love to know mm-hmm. how you got started. You know, it, your photos are great. Your podcast is great. I just would love to have a chat with you. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. asking for anything. I'm not looking for connects through him. I just, you know, and, and, our relationship has grown from that, which is really great. But Mm -hmm. I think Mm -hmm. just be mindful if you are networking, you know, people don't want to feel like you're just there to get something out of them. And so just keep that in mind. Right. That's very true. And hopefully one day, once you do work for that company, you can quit. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Once, Once you successfully networked your way into that company, you can then quit your job <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have advice for that coming up here in just a minute <laughs> yes. so last last quick tip uh explaining the gap you know people want to know why and again with the pandemic this has become not so important not as important people understand there were layoffs you know people can go into the office right. couldn't go in all these things so mm-hmm. it's actually a pretty good time if you did have some kind of transitional period you know, Mm -hmm. where people aren't as concerned with why, you know, your resume might have some space between, you know, jobs. Mm, So, you know, so let's talk a little bit about the psychology and the feelings. We love some feelings up in here. So (laughs) the muse.com, I found this great article about feeling guilty, which I alluded to in the beginning, Ryan apparently (laughs) just doesn't give a fuck. It's like, bye. (laughs) <laughs> no fucks. No fucks here. <laughs> so, we kind of talked about this in the beginning, the societal view, you know, and you and I were kind of talking about this before we started recording. Right. How do people stay in jobs for 50 years? That just doesn't Ugh. feel like the the culture and the world we live in. You know, I think mm. the average now is like five years for someone to stay with a company. 
And, wow. but yet we still have this mentality or feeling of guilt when we're leaving a job mm. that, that kind of doesn't correspond with where we are as a society and how the job market works nowadays. Hmm. And so, you know, a way to look at it, and this is kind of what I had to coach myself through when, mm-hmm. when I'm trying to deal with all the guilt of leaving, you know, jobs, companies mm-hmm. is that your company was fine before you and they'll be fine after you. Mm, that's fair okay so this kind of brings me to a point that I wanted to make because feeling guilty it's not as if like I have left jobs where I felt not necessarily guilt I don't think I've ever left a job feeling necessarily guilty but I have left jobs feeling like not even regret but more so I guess just the people that I'm leaving behind there like I wish better for them (laughs) you know what I mean (laughs) Like it's more, it really is because the company, I don't know if I've just never had an attachment to like companies or entities that way. I feel like I've always seen them for exactly what they are. Like you want productivity out of me and I want a check from you. I don't think I've ever had like a mindset of like, oh, we're like a part of this company. Like, no, I'm not. Like, do I have stock in this company? No. So (laughs) I'm not a part of this company. I'm a worker bee. And again, like for the most part, that's fine. I think the only place uh, when I was working at Starbucks, that was because I really liked the people who I was working with, but even same thing, like Howard Schultz, like signing off, like at the end of like our, like, you know, monthly letter, like sincerely Howard, like Howard, you didn't fucking write this. Shut up. Like, you know what I mean? This is some PR person, which good for them, PR person, you know, but the whole idea that, you know, you're a family when you work for companies, like, and just in general, especially in America, you are a cog and machine, you will be replaced. And so (laughs) the guilt wasn't always there. But yeah, but what I will say is that, yeah, the people that I left behind, I felt more like, yeah, I wish better for you. Um, But also, too, I will say I've had to like, have that kind of thicker skin about it because first of all I am a black woman in America and like things don't just like generally work out for me in the company setting um there's been way too many times and way too many instances of you know people just seeing the way I work it's just different right Mm -hmm. it's just it's just something the way she does it or the way she says it it's just always got to be something added to it. And, and I, I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just like showing up as myself. Right. Right. Uh, but it, but it, there's just always like this other layer of something that I'm doing. That's really just like, like making somebody either, you know, like uncomfortable or I'm, I'm just by me just being there. It's, it's changed. Right. Like, I don't know. I can't name the amount of times that I've been told, you know, I'm so glad that like, they went for, you know, diversity. Like, I'm so glad that, you know, you're, you're here. I'm so glad that like this company's putting focus on diversity. And I'm just like, and that was before I had my face on my resume. I will have you say, <laughs> oh. uh, you know what I mean? I'll have you know that it's because like a big seriously. surprise you walk in, they're like, where's Ryan? You're like, Hey, <laughs> no, yes. Many a times they've said, Oh, I thought Ryan, I thought it was going to be a boy. You know, I thought it was going to be a guy, you know? And I'm like, no. And then I get the job. And again, yeah, like, obviously, like, obviously, there's certain things about dynamics that will change when you have somebody that doesn't look like everybody else in the office. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I think that from, yeah, from a very early age, like, it was just very clear to me that I'm just disrupting spaces, you know what I mean? And I'm just now getting to a place, literally where I live, but also like, mentally and emotionally, where I'm rejecting those spaces and I'm like no actually I don't want to be the diversity hire anymore like that's a very lonely road yeah. nobody talks about that a lot um you know you see now like oh women owned companies and minority owned companies that was not a thing even like 10 years ago you know when we me and you and you know people of our age group first started working places they were still yeah. very white male dominated I mean and, and still are in a lot of places you oh, know yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, the idea that, like, you know, us being there, like, adds something to it. It's like, why can't I just show up and do my job just like everybody else, right? Why do I have to take on, like, an extra responsibility? And so I think really from that, I've never had that kind of ideal, like, idealized job place where where I went into the job and it was like, oh, like, she's leaving. Like, I think 
I don't even know if I can name on like seriously any job where when I left they were like oh man like Ryan like mm. we're really gonna miss you I mean individual people will tell me that right right, right. Like, but you've been it's, friends with yeah right exactly right. so I will say that I think I think that there's nuance to this conversation I think that a lot of times like when you're when you're talking about feeling guilty again it's more so like darn there's some really good people in this company and I hate that I have to leave them in this situation so that's what I would add to that <laughs> yeah no and that's a great point you know another you know thing brought up in this article is that if the roles were reversed and you mm. were being laid off, would the company have feelings of <laughs> guilt and sadness? Mm, probably not. They're probably looking at how much your severance is going to be. And like, you know, if they're going to cover your, right. your health benefits for any amount of time after, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> if anyone's like a guilt ridden person like me, then, you know, and that's the thing too. It's not like I loved all my companies and oh, I felt so bad. Right. It's like, no, I, and I had dipped out in some pretty dramatic ways. So I'm not saying I'm like, <laughs> I'm always doing it right. No, like, <laughs> I've been like, Hey, yeah, I'm not going to work here tomorrow or any other day. Okay. Bye. <laughs> like I have been just like, peace out. Goodbye. I'm done. <laughs> So yeah. I'm not saying it's, but I think I have that guilt of that internalized guilt of feeling like a mm. failure or mm. like a quitter. Okay. You know what I mean? There that mentality, go. like, oh, she can, she can hack it. She can stick it out, mm. you yep. know? And that's, yep. that's more the struggle than, oh, they're, mm. you know, they're not going to be lost without you, you know? Right. And right. so that's, yeah, that's, and, and think about it another way, like, there are plenty of people who are looking for new opportunities. If you need to step right. away from something that's not serving you or whatever the case may be, or you got another opportunity. Ooh. Yeah. There are people who are looking for the opportunity that you are leaving. Yes. And they, okay. you know what I mean? They can fill that spot and they might be fulfilled in that position. And so right. it's not fair to yourself to stay there, but if you need another perspective to look, look at this through, then that would be right. one. Open yes. that job up for someone else who is looking for a new opportunity. Yes. That also brings up a thought um, that I've had many a times. And I think it comes with like the networking idea that like, if I got it, you know, if I got this job because I had to wiggle my way through and jump through all these hoops and figure it out uh, to only come on, you know, come to the other side and finally like get through and break this glass ceiling and all the other bullshit that we tell each other. Like <laughs> I, despise people that do not want to pull up other people to their level. Yeah. Like when you meet people in spaces where they're just like, well, I just had to do all these things. And like, you know, you're just not there yet. No, fuck off. First yeah. of all, because that shouldn't be the norm. The norm should not be, or the standard should not be that you have to jump through hoops and bounds and prove that you are super black woman or super whoever yeah. to be in this space. The norm should be that everybody has something to give. And if somebody else wants to try that out after you're done, why are you not helping them get there? Like that is one thing that I always constantly try to do, like with new teachers or mm -hmm. Uh, new interpreters or whoever is in my space, because I've had a lot of jobs over the years, I am always like quick to give like whatever the recipe is that I figured out. Like, all you have to do is like call this person because I called the person in HR and like, this is what they're looking for. So like, just do that. You know, right. there has been so many times where people have been, well, I don't know, you know, it took me a lot to get here. And da -da -da. Okay, so you want me to have to go through that same struggle? Like, wouldn't you have liked it if somebody was there for you, which I guess we will probably talk about with mentors, but I just don't understand the idea that like, you know, that's that gatekeeping, right? That's that mentality that like, if, if it took me this much to get here, I mean, you should just keep working. You'll get there one day. Why the fuck not today? You're quitting. Give me your fucking job. Like, no, me. like you know? <laughs> right. Absolutely. And I don't have the numbers or anything, but I did read somewhere like statistically, that is the mentality of women in, in workspace, especially mm -hmm. in higher positions. Yeah. Because there is a mentality of I fought so hard to get here. They, yes. you know, I don't, like I said, I don't know the numbers, but bringing other women up is not something you see as often as, Oh no, like you, you can't step up into this space with me. You know, like I can't help mm. you. Like I'm not here to give you advice. Like I've got my own shit. Like I did this myself. And so there isn't that sense of helping build others, which is unfortunate, 
It you is. know, um, which is a discussion for a later episode. We'll definitely right. get this into is a all whole, the... yeah, we'll, keep that. we'll do, but yeah, no, that's a great yeah. point. And that's true. Yeah. And that's not how it should be. You know, right. there are plenty of people looking for new opportunities and we should be helping them out. Okay. So lastly, let's talk about why it is okay to quit your job or for Ryan fun, <laughs> exciting, <laughs> favorite pastime. <laughs> yeah. So, I got some great details from an article from the BBC. So I want to start with a quote. So faced with the prospect of quitting Denver, Colorado based uh, organizational psychologist, Melissa Doman says, typically speaking, people still self-criticize for many people. Their job is heavily tied to their identity and self-efficacy. So like we were talking about, right? Like the guilt isn't that you're leaving the company high and dry. It's more, about your worth, you know, how ingrained that is with Mm. your sense of self, you know, and your self-worth. Yeah. So this is kind of like toxic workplace environment, you know what I mean? And like, not even, well, I was going to say toxic positivity, but that's a different episode. Mm -hmm. But um, toxic, what is it? Like, work ethic right and thinking that yeah what we produce is like what we're worth right yeah uh so that's I'll let you keep going but that's kind of what it reminds me of that like we are a very productivity driven society right and so often you will find that people who are either in between jobs right which is fancy for saying unemployed because nobody wants to actually admit that they're unemployed right? Like even the language of in between jobs is implying that I will have a job again, right? I will be productive and worth a value again. It's just that right now I'm in between, you know what I mean? Like it's a very, it just sets us up for, you know, a life of like always trying to prove that we can do more, right? that we're never done. Right, right. Absolutely. Especially in the U.S., our mentality, you know, compared to other countries, Mm. the amount we work and the time we take off are just really skewed in comparison. And so that's a really good point in that sense as well. Yes. And the pandemic can help shift this. Like we said, the great resignation, people are moving around, you know, we're seeing these numbers of people that want to change careers or change industries entirely. And so Mm -hmm. this is changing the societal structure and views around, Mm -hmm. you know, this idea And so hopefully we'll see a shift in that because it's not healthy. Like we said, you know, it is toxic. You, you know, you have to grow as a person and your whole identity can't be tied into just your work. Right. So would you say you are one of the people, a part of this great resignation? (laughs) I would say probably so. I think the pandemic gave me a lot of free time to uh, focus on my mental health or the fact that I wasn't taking care of it. Mm. And so I didn't have the, the weekends of going out and the traveling and the trips and all the things that I was doing that were fun and that my job was, you know, giving me the opportunity to maintain. Right. Without all that, I think I just hit a wall and I'm still working on it. You know, it's been almost a year since I left that job and I'm finally getting to a place where my work is not everything, but you know, I want to do meaningful things. And I'm trying to find that balance and going to therapy and, and working out, you know, what's fulfilling for me, where does my self worth come from? You know, where do my passions lie? And like, you know, I've been very fortunate in having the space to be able to explore those things. Mm. But, um, but yeah, absolutely. I would say so. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, I think we both are. I know, I would say many people that I didn't even know it was being called something like the great resignation. Mm. That's super true. It's very, very fitting because I do know quite a few people who, who were either in a job where they were just completely unsatisfied even before, but like you said, they were at least distracted enough to kind of get through it during the week. Right. Like I'll push through the week because this weekend I'm going to college. Right. Right. Exactly. So I think for myself, I do also think that I've transitioned through the pandemic. Like I've tried to kind of figure out other paths and things like that. Um, 
But at the same time, it is really hard. I feel like I've kind of went back to what I know a little bit because it's very tough to feel like you are not going to be the productive person that maybe not even you want to for yourself, but for others, right? And like what yeah. you've held in high esteem for so long has been, I'm doing X, right? Like I'm a teacher. I'm this thing that yeah. is very respected in society. Like people have a lot of, you know, love and support for teachers, even though they don't pay us enough. But, you know, we get the hand claps, you know what I mean? Like we yeah. get the, we get the praise without all of the other benefits, but at the same time, at what cost, you know, like, yeah. at what cost do you have to continue doing something that you know is not good for you or not even necessarily not good for you, but just that, you know, if given an opportunity outside of it, you would totally take it. Right. That's absolutely true. One of my old coworkers used to be a teacher and then mm. he moved to a tech company. So, <laughs> wow. you know, example A, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and he's just said, he's like, the amount of stress and, and this, and he came to a stressful job. It's not like we were, you know, not doing anything. Like this was a right. stressful job that I had left last year. And so mm -hmm. he, he would take that on over being a teacher. Cause he's like the, the return the reward yep. for the amount of work and the amount of stress. He just didn't feel that it was fair. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't fulfilling for him. And so example right. aid, what you're talking about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So another point is having a job lined up before you leave your current position. Mm. So I did not do this and it was fucking <laughs> terrifying, <laughs> but that's kind of how people skirt that stigma of leaving, of resigning, of quitting a job, a better opportunity. Right. And so then that, that's great. You're bettering yourself. Everything's great. But right. what if you don't have that lined mm -hmm. up and you just want to leave, you know, you mm -hmm. want to take that risk and, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully you have some kind of cushion and, and it is terrifying and there are repercussions. And, and like you said, there are other people to think about if you have a family, if you have responsibilities, which we all do, but in what capacity, Right. And so, you know, I think <laughs> there is that stigma of being unemployed for a time or, mm -hmm. you know, not having something lined up that is really right. terrifying. And so people who do that, they're like, oh, wow, you know, you're either really stupid or really brave. Like, I don't know, like, you know, it just kind of freaks everyone out. And it's, it's fucking yeah. scary a little person doing it. Yeah, <laughs> a little, a little <laughs> it's right. There's. <laughs> there's always fear with uncertainty and, and not having a job and income is like one of the ultimate uncertainties. Right. Right. So well, this, is, this is very comparable to being in a relationship that you're unhappy in and <laughs> looking outwards, right. You're like, this relationship is not great. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know if the grass is necessarily greener, but I'm going to dabble outside, you know, test the waters if you will. Uh, and then see if I can like make the old switcheroo. You know what I mean? I've definitely done this, not with relationships, with uh, a job. <laughs> yeah, she tested the waters while she was in a relationship. That sounds like you're <laughs> stepping out on your, your man. You're like, all right, I'm just going to go, you know, it's a great weekend. Sure, honey. Yeah. Like, that's what it sounds like, but it's okay. I know what you meant. <laughs> I mean, hey, if that's, if that's what gets you through, no, I'm just kidding. I do not condone cheating. Actually, I don't care. Do whatever you want. If you're going to cheat on somebody, that's your own business. It's definitely not mine. <laughs> oh, there's a thing on social media right now, and it's like, cheating on cheating doesn't exist like cheating I don't know what these people are saying exactly but it's like cheating um you can't cheat on someone else if they cheat they're cheating on themselves because you can't own a person what do you think about that <laughs> I was watching E Nightly Pop which is like <laughs> shows leave me alone but I... they were talking about it and some of them were like mm, like I don't know like I, I mean guess. I will say I will say this, I, as a person that has, has never had this problem, like, personally, so I really can't say, like, the emotional baggage and, like, yeah. trauma and shit that goes with it, I won't comment on that, because that, I'm sure it fucking sucks, right, to have this person, whether or not you're in a good relationship or not, hopefully it's better than most, but even if you're not in a great relationship, you still don't want to find out that, like, the other person has, like... <laughs> like genuinely tried to find somebody to replace you. You know what I mean? Right. Like that would obviously suck in pretty much any situation. Right. However, I will say 
that there is something to be said about realizing that you really don't have anything to do with people cheating. Like people cheating in a relationship, whether or not they're committed to you or love you or don't give a fuck about you. It doesn't really matter. Like if they're cheating on you, it's because they want to do other things that literally don't concern you. So I've never really understood the ownership around it. Um, But like I said, it's never happened to me. So I'm not going to act as if I'm like, oh yeah, he cheated. But like, I'm a better person. Like, yeah, bitch. Like, I don't know. (laughs) I'd probably be devastated as well, you know? And like burn all those photos or something like that. Uh, But I will say that it just doesn't, like you have to understand that, yeah, literally it has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? Like, unless they're trying to get back at you, with which I have heard of people, we actually both know a person that literally got cheated on, so they cheated on their significant other just to get back at them. Like, it was just a revenge fuck, which I'm just like, that's so stupid. Like, who it's wins? It's not solving anything. Like, it doesn't right. sound like your rela- relationship is going to get back on track after this. <laughs> yeah, you You know, I don't... You've yeah. leveled the playing field. Yeah. You had a dick. I had a badge or the other way or both of either. Yeah. And now we're just like going to move on in holy matrimony. Like I just don't <laughs> think it's going to work that way. <laughs> oh, if it has, let us know. DM us. Yeah. yeah. We're curious so, now. It's <laughs> <laughs> let us know in the comments if you've ever been cheated on and are happy even after. <laughs> yeah. If you, yeah, got your revenge and things are smooth sailing from there, let us know. We're curious. Right? (laughs) And I want tips. Yeah. (laughs) That's great. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Back on track. So, (laughs) um, okay. So, we talked about having a job lined up and not having a job lined up. And... Mm -hmm. Like we said, you know, people think you're crazy or people think you're brave or whatever it is. But the point is people are going to offer their feedback, whether you ask for it or not. (laughs) So just get ready for that. If you're quitting your job, you don't have something lined up. You're going to take some time for yourself. Mm -hmm. People are going to have comments on it. And of course, you're going to go to friends and ask for advice and it's going to be scary and you're going to try and navigate. But just keep that in mind, whether it's solicited or not, people are coming in with opinions. <laughs> yeah. What is, if you can think of, you know, on the spot, can you think of any advice post, you know, job quitting that was just like, why the fuck would you say that? Like, um, you know what I mean? Like, have you had anything, you know how like when people are pregnant and people like randomly say shit, like, oh, it's a girl. Like I can feel it. Like how's your, <laughs> how's it sitting? And it's like, bitch, what? <laughs> Right. So what is your, you know what I mean? Like, have you had anything like that? I have an example, but I'll let you go first because I, just, yeah. I think people coming in with like job recommendations, like, mm. oh, you know, like medical billing will be, and I'm like, no, I just left an insurance tech company. Like, and, and maybe that's my fault for not being super like, oh my God, here's every single detail of what happened. But I think people just coming in and being like, oh, you should do this. And I'm like, you don't really know what I should do. I don't know what I should do. So I'm not sure if you know exactly what I should do. Like, you know, and I think people are coming <laughs> from a good place, but I, right. my reaction is I'm like, well, you know, you know, like I'm trying to spend this time to figure out what I want to do. Mm. And, and I appreciate the feedback or the thought or whatever it is. <laughs> However, you know, my like knee jerk reaction is like, no, right. I'm not going to do that. I'm figuring it out. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah but what about you so <laughs> after college so after my undergrad um I found a job at like this advertising agency um and then I also got hired at Amazon which was the fucking bane of my existence yeah. fuck Amazon I'm sorry they're never going to be our sponsor just FYI mm-hmm. unless they are in which case you know hey I'll take the money but probably not <laughs> <laughs> probably not um but I got high yeah so like I was just scrambling like I had graduated college I knew somewhat of the direction I wanted to go but like I was scrambling like I was looking for everything you know that I could um and I told people like what I studied in college you know like I was a double major so I studied black studies I studied deaf studies And people just came with the weirdest, like, outlandish, oh, you should work in special ed. Like, you should just, you should go do that. Like, they really need people. And I'm just like, first of all, 
No. Second of all, did I say anything about that realm? Like people just yeah. make associations in their own mind without actually asking you. You could just ask me like, yeah. oh, like, what do you want to do? Right. Yeah. Or like, what are you looking forward to? Or, you know what I mean? But instead, it's always this, like you said, it's always this advice that literally has no connection to me. Yeah. You just, you know, it's like that yeah. person wants to feel like they're helping you. You right. know what I mean? You can make a lot of money in X, Y, Z. I, but I don't do X, Y, Z. And also I'm not going to sell my soul. So like, no, like, you know, everything is not going to fit me. That's also what I find a lot that I fall into. A lot of people tell me, oh, you could work in higher education and you could be like a Dean or something like that. And I internalized that for a long time. Like I was like, oh, like, okay. Right. Yeah. I was like, I could be a Dean. Like I could do, and I could, I'm not saying I'm not literally capable, but I, I just, there's parts about me that I just can't, right? Like there's yeah. parts about being in these like really uppity, air, like formal, places, like super formal, like uptight. old school tradition kind of. Yeah. Yeah. That I would just not thrive in. I would have to really like diminish a lot about myself. I would have to be like a muted version of myself basically because I'm not what they want in those spaces. There's a no, reason why those spaces not after this are the podcast. way they are. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's but seriously, right? Like we are taking a leap of faith realizing that we are like we are doing what we want to do because this is just what is fulfilling for us, right? Yeah. It's not because this is going to lead to a great networking opportunity. It's because we finally decided at the ripe age of whatever our age is, maybe you'll find out one day, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> the ripe age of 22, I'm, I'm really figuring out what I want to do with my life now. <laughs> uh, no, I know. And to that point, I feel like I don't ever get the kind of encouragement that I am looking for. You know, if mm-hmm. I you know, and that's not other people's fault, right? You right, have expectations right. of others and you're usually disappointed. Gotta, gotta learn that. But mm-hmm. on that note, from the experiences I've had, I, mm-hmm. if someone tells me they're interested in something, you know, my cousin recently said he wants to write a book. I'm like, that's really cool. You should nice. do that. And if you want to do that, I can help with proofreading. I was an English major. Like what oh, if yeah. you need something, right. you know? Yeah. And I just see other people being like, oh, well, what are you going to do with that? And I'm like, why does it have to be like, oh, well, you, you know, everyone's like, oh, I, that's scary. Don't do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, well, no, I, I want to do that. Or maybe I yeah. want to do that, but I don't need you to tell me that you don't support me. Right. You know, right. like, and I don't, and I, sorry, no, oh, I, yeah. I completely 100% agree exactly with what you're saying. And I want to add to that. Pl- don't ever underestimate the power of our own brain psyching ourselves out of things and right. and being negative to our own selves you know what I mean yeah like if you and I'm not saying I'm perfect at this I do this I'm sure a lot of the times and I do try to not do this but if somebody tells you something is vulnerable like doing something outside of the norm like I want to write a book I want to become an artist of some sort some type of you know profession that's not you know a doctor or a lawyer or something that we all like have to respect in society right Mm-hmm. just don't underestimate the fact that they probably already have so many of their own demons and so many of their own thoughts and negative perceptions of what they will be told if they outright, you know, share with people that they want to be some type of artist or something outside of the norm. Just don't underestimate the fact that our own brains do enough of the negativity for us. You really don't need to add to it. <laughs> if you, you know what I mean? If somebody tells you something very vulnerable about themselves that they want to do or that they have a, they have an idea for something, I guarantee that they have already talked themselves out of it probably of at least about 10 to maybe even a hundred times. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So a hundred percent. That's so, so true. And I yeah. think even having the job lined up scenario and all that mm-hmm. and trying to get rid of the stigma I think that whole idea of having a, an upward tra- trajectory is mm-hmm. also something that shouldn't be so expected either. If you're right. working, like you were saying, I could be making a lot more money, but I feel like I'd be selling my soul. Right. Okay. So if someone wants to step away or step into another field where it's not as lucrative, mm-hmm. but they are so much more fulfilled in every aspect of their life, like let's right. be encouraging of that too. Yeah. You know, yes. and it, it takes trying to figure out if it's not for you. 
Right. So if it seems so crazy that someone's leaving their big tech job to go start a coffee shop, then, you know, good on them. That's fucking scary. And it's hard. And like you said, (laughs) they've probably been like, you're an idiot a million times a day in their head. So they probably don't need you to tell them the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So be supportive. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So on all of that, I just wanted to end with you know, a uh, quote that we are aware. So the same psychologist, Melissa Doman says, quote, try to temper the fear and the uncertainty. The fact that you're making the decision that's right for your life in your career is a privilege and it's an opportunity. Hmm. So after all this conversation about quitting your job, not everyone is in the position where they can do that. And we totally understand that and respect everyone who is, you know, grinding day in and day out to make things work and, you know, search for those opportunities, whatever they may be, because they're Mm -hmm. out there and there are people that will support you. We Mm -hmm. will support you. We're here. DM us. We'll talk about it. (laughs) (laughs) But to that point, we understand, you know, sometimes you've got to make that paycheck and it's not as easy. And, you know, there are other reasons for leaving your job and we support you if it's that you need to take care of your mental health or right. you need to relocate, you right. know, or if you have to stay somewhere because you need that paycheck and you need to make rent, whatever the reason is, you know, leaving your job with uncertainty is a privilege, but looking for new opportunity is something that everyone deserves to do. So we support everyone. And we just wanted to say that we, you know, are very aware of anyone's situation. Right. But we believe in you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So quit and, your job, be empowered. <laughs> right. Yeah. But uh, before we go, just want to always, as always, shout out Pro Bono ASL. Thank you so much for the amazing interpreters and always sticking with us through all of this, through all of our bullshit. <laughs> uh, yes, they're the best. And if you guys want more like our episodes, you can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, uh, save, leave us a review, five star review. Check us out on social media, Instagram at wrong the podcast, send us a DM, come hang out with us in the community. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. And on that note, thank you. And tune in next time for another episode of am I doing this wrong? Oh yeah.